for joining me for my second video making snowflakes from a single piece of copy paper. Our first snowflake was the two squares. When you released those from that copy paper, you wound up with this rectangle. So what I'd like you to do is fold it in half and then cut along that fold, dividing them into two. And then fold those in half long ways. And if you have a paper cutter at home, you can just do this with your paper cutter. And if you feel like doing these separately, take the time and do them separately. I'm going to do them together for the sake of time in this video. I'm going as straight as I possibly can along that line. We're going to make these pieces, the quarters, into thirds. So I'm just going to eyeball, but if you want to take out a ruler and divide this into thirds, you go right ahead. That looks about like a third. I'm going to cut along here. If you've got kindergartners at home, first graders, it's a great activity to cut these up just mark them with a very faint pencil marking on the edge. S cutting in straight, straight lines. Excellent practice for art skills. All right, so you would cut those up and then do these in a similar fashion. You're gonna wind up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 pieces. And there is zero waste on this snowflake. This is just like weaving a Thanksgiving placemat that we did in kindergarten and first grade. So I'm going to use slightly larger pieces uh, and I'm going to use some colored pieces. It might help you see how the weaving goes if I use some uh, alternating colors. So mine are going to be blue and white. But you can use these and yours will make this size snowflake. Awesome, let's get started. We're gonna lay out one piece this way and put a dot of glue, just a tiny bit of glue in the middle-ish. And then we're gonna place one of our strips perpendicular to that, 90 degree angles, fourth and fifth grade-ish, halfway each way. It does not need to be perfect. We're gonna trim the edges when we get done. So just approximate it. I use uh, Elmer's glue. I've used glue stick. I find that um, it breaks apart after a year. I've used hot glue and then put the ornaments in the attic and over the summer the glue melted and they all fell apart. So I, I've always used Elmer's glue ever since and they seem to last year to year. So that's my recommendation is just some school glue. All right. On top of this white one, we're gonna lay, excuse me, we're gonna lay two white strips on this side. So if you're making a multicolor one. Anyway, this blue guy you can see is underneath, so my side ones need to go on top. And I will get a little glue under each of those on top. Creating our little weaving mat. And this is how big it is, it's very, simple little weaving mat. A little glue, three by three. Okay, and I put a small bit of space in between my strips. Then, going the other way, since this one's white, I'll use two blues. And this white one is under here, so I'm going to go over the white and under the blue, and then over the white. Okay, so it's an under over. No glue yet. I like to make sure I've got it correct. So I'm going, this one goes under, so this one goes over. See that under there, over here. I'm gonna pull it down here and get under the blue. Come on blue. And then back over the white. I like the color ones, you can really see the weave. I'm pretty sure that's correct. Under, over, under, over, over, under, over, under. 
Then I'm going to glue. I'll start by lifting my side guy over here and the dab of glue there. It's no problem if it comes all wonky because we'll get it all down pat when we finish gluing. Then I'll pull the end up here, stick some glue in there, and down here and some glue there. Pat it down. There we go. Over on this side. and a little glue and so you're going to repeat this process with six more strips making another weaving mat when you're we pause the video and or back it up and start over and make your second weaving mat I strongly suggest you do this on a surface that you don't care about because this really does get glue everywhere and then when you're done lift it off so it doesn't stick to your to your work service surface and let it dry somewhere come back to me when you've got both your weaving mats done and we'll move on to the next part of the video and if you're done with your weaving mats here we go I'm gonna start on the right hand side of the three and I'm gonna put a dot of glue on that one and I'm gonna turn my weaving mat, the right of the three, and a dot of glue. Turn the right of the three and a dot. Turn the right of the three and a dot. Now, I'm going to take that right one and I'm going to take its neighbor on the other side and turn them both over. It makes a nice edge you can see the edges match if I pull that white behind you can see that 90 degree angle there and this does require you to hold it till it dries I'm going to repeat that action on each side so you get to see it again the one with the glue lift it up its L-shaped neighbor lift that guy up and then both of them turn to face the table did you see that Turn those guys to face the table. You, the one with the glue goes on top, obviously. That's how it's gonna stick. Okay, maybe not, obviously. I probably didn't do that the first time. And then hold, 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 hold. And then turn it and repeat the process. You've got your one with the glue. Pick that guy up. His L neighbor, pick him up glue. You see my one just fell apart because I didn't hold it long enough. Turn them to face and it makes this little loop. And repeat that on all four of these and your other mat. And come back to me when that is done. All right. I have finished all four loops on both weaving mats and I've let them dry for a minute so that I'm not aggravated if they pop open. Now, on our last one, we took them and turned them and placed them together with both of them facing up. On this woven one, we actually do the opposite. We're going to leave one of them facing up and take the other one and turn it upside down. So I'm gonna do that right now. I'm gonna turn it upside down, hold it over the top, and then do that quarter turn and lay it inside. All right, I'm gonna do it one more time, really close so you can see. Here's both of them laying flat. The loops are coming off of the table. I lift this guy up and turn him over so my loops are facing down toward the table. Hold it directly over the other weaving mat. Turn it a quarter turn and then lay it in there and it should fit perfectly inside. Awesome. All right, and this is the part that gets a little bit wonky, but you'll make it. We have four strips left with nothing done on the top. 
we're going to pop them through the loops from the bottom. So I'm turning it. I'm just going to pop it through the loop from the bottom one. Here's three. Pop that through that loop. And here's four. Pop it through. I've, I've not glued it yet. I'm going to flip it over. So carefully turn the whole thing over. And again, I have four strips that I haven't used yet. And I have four loops from the underside one. So I'm just going to thread these through these loops. One, two, three, four. And now we need to make this marriage permanent of these two weaving mats. So we're going to get our glue again. And I like to work on the one that's on the table first. So I'm going to take this little petal here, and I'm pretty sure that this is in the center. And I'm going to lift the unused one and glue it to the petal that I wove it through. So push that down and turn. Again, I'm, I've skipped the one that's kind of off the table, and I'm going to the next one that's on the table, okay? Just easier to glue it against the table and be able to pr put pressure on that glue spot, okay? A little bit of glue on the pointed part. Press that loop down. Now hold it for just a moment. And then turn, skip one. This one's off the table. Go to the next one that's on the table lift my unused strip, put the glue on the loop, and then put that unused strip on the loop. And then I've got my last one that's touching the table. Lift the unused strip, put the glue on, press down. I'm just going to repress all of these before I flip. Make sure they know who's boss. This is Trantum. This is boss. All right, that looks good. Let's flip the whole thing over very gently. And now we have four more to do, and it'll be easy because they're on the table. Little glue, unused strip, goes on that point, turn. All right, here's number three. Tiny bit of glue, pop that down, and the fourth tiny bit of glue, pop that down, and again I'm going to repress these just to make sure there's one that popped off. There's a lot of pressure on them now. All right, my friends. This looks pretty good. There's a three-dimensional snowflake. But we're going to tidy up these edges. And this is why I told you in the beginning it didn't really matter. Ish was my word for this snowflake. Because you're going to come along. And again, we, we do four at a time and then we're going to flip. This time you're going to work with the upper weaving mat because it shows you the point. Okay? So I'm going to follow the point that it already makes on the petal on the upper one. So this is the one that's not on the table, and I'm gonna trim off that piece so it gives it a nice edge. I'm gonna skip, you can see on this one, you can't see the point on the bottom petal, so I'll skip that guy. Here I see the point. Bring it way up so you can see it. So I'm gonna trim the excess off, skip that guy. Here's my next one trim and the last one give this one a trim and then flip my whole snowflake over and I can trim the other one of other four at this point you might want to spray the whole thing with spray glitter with spray glitter or tie a nice ribbon on it, do a paper ribbon, put some tape on the back here and just hang it on a window. But that is your three-dimensional snowflake and you've got those nice trimmed pointy edges. I hope you enjoyed these two snowflakes and I hope you'll go to my 
playlist on my YouTube channel for some other more complicated three-dimensional snowflakes and share this activity with your family members as you spend the holiday break together. Have a great winter break and I'll see you in June.